Start of the meeting for the Deerfield Conservation Committee meeting for January 28th, 2021. And those present are Louis Mission, Ben Burns, Tim Hilchey, Pete Law. Okay, and we have uh, a couple. Uh, Notice of intents for under new business here. And I think the first one here is for a- uh... Thank you for your patience, Louis. Oh, there's- I made it in. Okay. And we have, could you just tell us who you are, Bill? <laughs> yep, so uh, yeah, Bill Mayer, PC. Okay. Thank you everyone for your patience tonight. Some technical issues. Thank you. And- uh... So we have a one of the we have a notice of intent for 264 River Road for driveway access to a building lot there. And uh, do we have someone there for this notice of intent? Good evening, Louie. Uh, for the record, my name is Emily Stockman. I'm a professional wetland scientist and the owner of Stockman Associates a wetland consulting firm based a um, little further west from you in the snowy Berkshires. Um, it's a pleasure to see uh, some of the commissioners uh, this evening. When at last I saw you, it was Saturday and we were bundled up and wearing masks. So now I get to see what, what you actually look like and you get to see me. Um, I understand um, that I'm gonna be able to have access to share my screen so I think what I'd like to do um, with the commission's approval is just to start off by putting up a site locust. So everyone at the meeting um, is aware of the property that we're discussing. And then I'll delve into presenting the project. No, oh, that sounds fine. Okay, if I've done that correctly, hopefully everybody has a view of a USGS topographic map. And we've called out the approximate yes. lot location. It's a lot that's just under 12 acres in size. It's on the westerly side of River Road. And as you can see from the uh, topographic map, Clat Brook enters the property from the north and flows south and to the southeast, sort of along that southerly property bounds. The notice of intent that I'm presenting this evening is on behalf of my clients, Luke Bassard and Natalie Blaze, in regards to access for the construction of a single family home on the property. Uh, Luke and Natalie are in the, in the process of purchasing the property. They do not own it at this time. Um, as you can see, uh, Clat Brook is within the parcel and associated with Clat Brook, we have a 200 foot riverfront area, which is a protected resource under our Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Another interesting aspect of this parcel is that there's an existing gravel road. Um, we were able to do some research with some historic aerial imagery um, and could conclusively determine that the access road, just based on the satellite image, has been in existence prior to the Rivers Protection Act. Uh, my understanding is that with the local knowledge that the gravel road has been around for decades and in, in fact was used back in the day um, for harvesting ice from the pond and transporting it down to the river road. So I think I'll pause there before I pull up the next plan. Is everybody comfortable with the location of the property? Yep. Yeah, I yes. think I think so. So don't get too dizzy. I'm going to try to see if I can pull up the site plan. Here we go. Yeah. Zoom in. So this is the subject lot for the notice of intent. As I said, it's just under 12 acres in size. And um, 
There's an existing curb cut at River Road. This is where the gravel road currently exists. It continues into the parcel um, heading uh, westerly before veering to the north towards the home site. These are the mean annual high waterline flags that we placed in the field to be demarcate Clat Brook. And those of you who were on the site visit, you may recall there's also a small bordering vegetated wetland adjacent to Clat Brook near the property frontage that was also flagged. It was at the base of that very steep break in topography. If I zoom in a little more for my tired eyes, hopefully we can all see that there's a red line that Berkshire Design has added to the site plan. And that red line is depicting the limit of work. And you'll see that it's on both sides of the existing gravel road. The reason for that is that we need to do some minor adjustments to bring the driveway into compliance with both um, requests from the planning board as well as the fire chief. For the most part, the existing way is about 12 feet in width, but there are some areas where we're gonna need to expand um, to obtain that, that required 12 foot width. The other element of work that we need to do along the existing road is some trimming of branches um, and, some, and some cutting and pruning. And that's because beyond the 12 foot width, um, the fire chief wants to make sure that he can get his equipment up there without having issues with the canopy overhanging. So fairly minor impacts to riverfront because we're able to utilize the existing degraded driveway, or I should say the existing degraded gravel road. If we continue into the parcel, you'll see that the existing road would have headed towards the west. But to avoid impacts to our riverfront area, here's our 200 foot boundary, we wanted to veer that driveway to the north as soon as possible, minimizing additional impacts to riverfront. Then we were able to work with the applicants to place the home, the garage, the septic, and even a potential future barn all completely outside of the riverfront area. And that's really our goal when we look at riverfront redevelopment. We wanna utilize degraded area, but preserve the riverfront that's intact. And with this project, we're able to do so by placing the majority of the construction further to the north. But as I said, we do have some impacts. We have a little improvement that we need to do to the, gra the gravel road, and we do have to extend that driveway within a portion of riverfront. To offset those impacts, we proposed a number of activities. One is the planting of 32 native berry producing shrubs within the riparian zone to enhance our wildlife habitat. A second improvement, which I'm gonna scroll down to, is a removal of a historic junk pile that's located within the riverfront. So we'll remove all of the, that debris and allow the area to revegetate. And thirdly, there is an existing cleared area just to the north of the wood line that's somewhat degraded from sedimentation. And in this area, we're proposing to loam seed and then allow the area to naturally um, establish vegetation and succeed, which will expand the wood line closer to the Minano High Water Line of Clap Brook. Naturally, there are a number of additional details about the project that I would be happy to touch base on. But for now, I think I'll just pause and give the commission an opportunity to ask me any questions. Okay, Emily, uh, this is Louie. Hi, Louie. Hi. Uh, 
I know we were in discussion there about the uh, siltation controls. And like I said, I don't see them on the plan. And, you know, that's normally one of the things we do, we do require, you know, for, uh, you know, to have a site plan in case someone wants to, to, to look at it and just uh, make sure that the erosion controls are in the place where they're supposed to be. So that, that was, uh, I know we talked a little bit about it, but that, that was my concern. So if you could explain how that's gonna show up here or what your plans are for the erosion control along the, the brook there. Thank you, Louie. That's an excellent um, question and a very important detail as we move from permitting to construction phase. So as I mentioned, Berkshire Design in their site plan preparation um, gave us an overall limit of work. So really depicting on the site plan for the commission and other reviewers, um, the extent of impact both towards Flat Brook, but also on the far side. What we've done in the application, and bear with me, I don't mean to make you dizzy, <laughs> scroll up. Um, what we've done in the application is we have detailed a construction sequence of work. And that starts on page six. Um, and this really lays out all of the steps um, to the project from the time that the order of conditions is received. So it talks about recording it. We are actually self-conditioning that there'll be an on-site meeting um, with the contractor and the landowner to make sure that they understand all of the NOI materials and the permit. But you'll see as you scroll down to our, through our sequence that we detail the installation of erosion controls. And we're proposing that the erosion controls will be a double barrier of straw bales and silt fence or similar. I like to use that term similar because for some sites our um, compost tube or filter sock um, with about a 12 inch diameter is a, is a suitable um, substitution. And sometimes that's uh, more of an economical question um, for the permittee. So straw bales and silt fence or compost tubes or the like will be installed along that southern limit of work. So right along, you see that red line. And they have to remain in, in place until uh, the construction is complete and stabilized. And it will serve as the limit of work closest to, to Clat Brook. OK, yeah, uh, just, just one question about that with the, uh, if you could go back to the uh, red line. Sure, bear with me. Okay, if you, if you could go down to the bottom by River Road. Sure. Can you see that, Louie? Yes, yes. Okay, so right right where you were talking about that little turnaround type thing. Well, I can't, I'm, trying, I'm pointing, but I can't. Right in there with the... Uh, yeah. Right in there, there's... You're, you're going to be outside that red line. That's all... You know what I'm saying? You said you're going to be seeding, lumen seed, and everything out outside that red line there. That is true. That's part of the improvement component that we would be, um, we would loam and, and seed and mulch. If the commission would feel more comfortable with a special condition, we could put um, additional erosion controls, uh, install them after we do the loaming in that area. Um, it's fairly level and the area will be mulched and there is a good filter strip here, um, but we would certainly be happy to add supplemental erosion controls if that was a special condition. Okay, it's just, just something that I'm just curious of how you're going to uh, address it there or how we should want it addressed. Hey, Louie, if, uh, if I could. Um... Yep. Uh, this is Pete Law, if I have a chance to jump in. Um, 
looking at that bottom of the driveway there where Emily was talking about where the uh, approvals will be uh, and the loaming, uh, I really, as I see the topography and such coming down there, I, I think we should really consider an additional condition of, of uh, control in that area. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it, it, in, in that area there, just extend that red line and have that uh, siltation control prior to any work there before the loom and seed. And just because of, like you say, that that's quite a slope there. A slope coming down, it flattens out. It's, yeah. it's, it's just, you know, rough. I mean, it's down to the gravel. It's not going to soak it in. It's going to run through. So. I, th I think that we would want to make that a condition. So I appreciate the offer there, but uh, I think we'd want to do that, but I'll leave it up to the others to chime in as well. Yeah, yeah Peter, Bill Mayer, PC, I, I do agree. Um, I, I, I think that this is be really important uh, to add that condition. Okay, we can... Uh... I agree. I mean, that's why I, you know, I had questioned it earlier there. And so uh, I know uh, Mark Stenson for DEP had some uh, comments for you. And I know you talked with him. Could you, uh, Emily, go over that a little bit? Uh, certainly, I'd be happy to. Um, let's see the best way to convey that. Let me see if I can pull up an aerial image and we can look at the picture that Mark was looking at. So Mark Stinson is a circuit writer from Mass DEP and he reviews the notices of intent from his desk in, uh, in Springfield or remotely. And so he really spends a lot of time with our aerial imagery, which is a great desktop tool to really vet uh, properties. Excuse me. And it gives you that satellite image. So even though he's not on the um, site visit with us, he can really get a sense of the property. I don't think I'm gonna have this at the right scale because I think the label for Clap Brook is gonna be right over Mark's concern. So um, after we filed a notice of intent, Mr. Stinson reached out to me with a concern because when you pull up the 2019 aerial, it looks like there's um, a trailer in the riverfront. And if that was unpermitted, that would be a potential violation of the Rivers Protection Act. I've been on the site um, multiple times since October and have never seen a trailer on the subject property. So I conveyed that to Mark and informed him that certainly we would look at that with, at the site visit. There, there are vehicles and other items that are stored off of this property to the north, but nothing within the subject property for this notice of intent. The other comment that Mark had was in regards to degraded area. And he um, just wanted to make it clear to the commission that degraded, um, you know, means things like junk piles, impervious surface, or in the case of the road, an absence of topsoil and vegetation. And that's why we were very fortunate that um, the snow cover wasn't, you know, 100% in Deerfield on Saturday, and we were all able to look at that road and see that it is in fact void of topsoil and um, and vegetation. So I did prepare a written response to the commission just so that you would have it for your record. Um, so what I did was um, I just gave you Mark comments, which I've just summarized in bold. These are taken directly from his comment letter that we all received. And then I've just given you a written response that I just verbalized um, so that you had that for the file moving forward. Oh. Okay. 
I uh, just uh, to, to let the board know and you, Emily, and the audience, I did talk to Mark Stinson today and uh, he, he he's reviewed your you know comments and that you know uh, your conversation you had together and he, he said he was uh, he was happy with uh, the response and uh, he see, sees no real issues for this and uh, so you know, I, I think it will we'll open it up for more questions from the board first. Does anybody have any uh, questions for Emily here? No, I uh, Ben Byrne here. Um, I know there was a bunch of scrap up there a bunch of years ago, but I believe 90% of that's all been cleaned out. I know we took a lot of it out of there. So I, I'm fairly familiar with the property and it's pretty, pretty cleaned out. Yeah, thank you, Ben. We did a, uh, we had a site visit and Pete and Tim and Bill and myself were there and it's pretty well cleaned up for that one little spot there. And uh, so, and the roadway is gravel. That was one of his concerns, Marks, and uh, it is definitely a gravel road, so. Yep, yep, definitely. So, uh, you know. We have a couple of questions. <clears throat> um, Emily, uh, Tim Hilchey here. Um, how much um, how much land is going to be disturbed in this project? How many acres is the road work considered part of disturbance? Um, That's an excellent question, Tim. And we actually did include. Um, let me let me turn to a table that I have. Just a moment. So. When we were looking at impact to riverfront area, we asked Berkshire Design to provide us with um, the impact associated with both um, proposed and temporary work associated with the project. So basically you're thinking of everything in between those red lines, everything in between that limit of work. And we had about 12,000 square feet in the inner 100 foot riverfront, and then another 10,000 square feet in the outer. And that's everything. So the existing road, because we are going to be um, top dressing the existing road. So we wanted to acknowledge that um, even though it's degraded, so it's not new degraded, it is still part of the work area. So that, um, that 10,000 that's outside um, the, the 200 foot buffer zone. Is that the footprint of the house, the footprint of the parking? Explain exactly. And, and uh, also yeah, the yeah. septic. Okay, excellent. So let me, let me go back to the site plan. And that will probably... So in terms of calculations, we were focused on jurisdictional areas. So this is, so here is our 100 foot riverfront area. So we calculated the impact within that zone and that was about 12,000. We had the 200 foot boundary and we calculated the impact in between that zone, which was about 10,000. We did not include impacts outside of riverfront area because it's within an upland outside of jurisdiction. It's my understanding from speaking with um, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Engine or Berkshire Design, that he will be presenting the entire project before the planning board. So the planning board jurisdiction is a little more so than what we have for rivers protection. That was going to be my next question: Is that um, 
are there anything is there anything in the in this plan that um, <clears throat> the planning board is going to have to rule on that um, impacts what we're discussing tonight? Um, I I mean they will obviously be reviewing the improvements to the roadway as well. But as I said, because their jurisdiction is somewhat larger in this instance, it's not always the case with from project to project. Um, I imagine they'll also be taking a look at, at the house site itself. And uh, just to get back to your question, here's that the on-site septic that you asked for is down in this area. Anybody else got questions here from the board or? No? Hey, Louise, Bill Mayer, PC. I I, I don't have a question, but you know, given the information we've received from Emily at the site visit and the information we've received from Mark, um, I'd like to make a, a, a motion um, for us to accept the notice of intent with the added order of condition. Um, uh, of the yeah, me, before that, Bill, I. And I uh, agree with you. We, we got to see if there's any questions from the audience there first. So I don't know, is, is uh, any questions from uh, the audience here? Hi, can you hear us? Uh, okay, yes. Is so, that, so this is, is this? this is uh, Carolyn and Joe Strykars. We are abutters at 269 River Road. And as everybody knows, we put a lot of money into our house and our, our new property here. And we just have some questions. If they're not applicable, let us know. It's our first time doing this. Um, so our first question is, is this driveway single use only or will other, um, is there other access going to be allowed? Or is it just for this home? I, I guess, uh, as far as I know, it's only for this, uh, this home, but uh, that, that really doesn't matter to, for us. That might be something okay. for the planning board. Okay. To, you um, know, to know, but. Okay. But that's right, what that's I know. Fair. It's as far as I know, it's, I mean, it only shows a single house going up and uh, what happens after that, that's, that's for the planning, I believe. Okay. Um, our second question is, does the applicant plan on doing any blasting into the ledge um, that's, that's kind of to the right? Um, there's areas of that existing road that are very close to where the water is. And we're just wondering if there's going to be any kind of blasting to widen the road or anything like that. Leave that would, you so, like me, would you like me to respond to that? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. So the, the goal, be, that's an excellent observation and very true. So the goal um, with the ledge is really to try to, um, to, to avoid having <laughs> uh, to take significant uh, steps with it for the driveway itself. So as I mentioned um, in my introduction, the majority of the road um, is almost the full 12 feet that we need. Um, and um, as you can imagine, because of the complexity of blasting, uh, it's the preference of the landowner to not have to go through that process. Um, but certainly based on the review of the commission um, and the planning board, um, if, if the authorities felt that certain areas needed to be widened, uh, that, that may be a requirement. Okay, so our next question would be if, if that were the case, um, could yeah. that have any impact on the environment um, the, and, and wells, uh, foundations, et cetera? Yeah, so it's been, it's been my experience with this type of uh, blasting for a, a smaller residential development or a driveway access that you're not looking at the type of say blasting that you may find you know in a quarry environment where they're going much deeper and looking uh, for a, a more substantial 
impact. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have not run into any issues um, with glassing on past projects for single family um, development. And, and again, it would be at a minimum. So for example, if you needed to um, remove a piece of ledge uh, to widen a driveway, you're not really going um, to a, an extreme depth. Uh, your goal would simply just to be able to widen at that ground surface um, elevation. So you're saying you don't feel it would have any impact on a well or a foundation on our property? No, I, and it, it may be, a, to, um, I was wondering, it may be, a, I don't know if it's a better question before the planning board. Jeff Squire, who's the project engineer on this, um, had a conflict this, this evening. Um, and I feel that he may be somewhat better suited to respond to that. Um, but it's my understanding just from team discussion that it, it was not a concern. Okay. And our last question, again, um, for wintertime maintenance of the existing road, because it is so very close to that brook, when you're salting, sanding, plowing, does that not have any impact on that waterway? Where does, where does that stuff go? Yeah, no, those, these are excellent questions. So that was a concern of ours um, when, when we were looking at uh, the, the property um, initially, just because of the proximity. Um, but having been there multiple times um, and other team members as well, uh, the drainage really wants to head primarily down that driveway. And then at that first um, substantial break in slope where we were talking earlier about added erosion controls, really short of sheet flow. The, the goal is to, to have it get down to that elevation and then sheet flow off of the driveway surface onto the shoulders where because of those coarse uh, sandy soils, we have pretty good infiltration. Um, another element that we're gonna be um, looking at is where the um, existing road gets closest to the brook. There's a small mm -hmm. section where it's actually um, close enough to just be a slightly unsettling. <laughs> right, right. For, for when you're when you're driving uh, down it, so we we propose um, a boulder guardrail there, and or um, some post and beam guardrail, um, and that'll be a visual that will also uh, serve to make sure that anyone who's plowing that driveway is not going to inadvertently plow towards the brook. Um, so again, we would be plowing and then pushing the snow either up further towards the house site or down at that lower lower area where we have a little more uh, girth. There's a, a, a greater wood line, a better vegetative strip because we absolutely don't want any snow that might have sand and salt uh, plowed into that waterway. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, Debbie Schreiber from Pocumtuck Drive. Just have a couple other questions. Actually, uh, the, the other folks asked some of the things I was, uh, that I was going to raise and ask. Um, I, and I'm still concerned a little bit about wintertime driving on this and protective measures for the brook, because even though you might be uh, plowing the snow uh, and its amendments to one area, you very often still have to put down either sand or and or salt because of icy conditions. And, and this is a kind of a pretty steeply sloped area. I'm a little worried about both somebody accidentally driving into the brook by, because they slip and slide and also just the impact on the vegetation uh, and, and the brook of added salt to that system and or sand as well. And I'm, I'm thinking about your 32 berry producing shrubs. I'm not quite sure if how they're going to tolerate some of those amendments. So I'm, I'm wondering if you've given thought to having some other kinds of protective vegetation uh, by the brook that is going to be tolerant, better tolerant of salt and or extra sediment or help, help uh, keep extra sediment from going into the brook. I'd just like to know what you're thinking about that because it's kind of one thing in the construction phase, it's another for the longer term condition that I'm concerned about. Yeah, excellent. I'm gonna try to take those one at a time, Debbie, but I might have to ask you to refresh my memory. You had a few good ones there. Oh, that's um, a terrible thing to ask, actually. 
so let's start. So let's start with the shrubs. Um, I, I can let you know that the, the actual shrub planting is going to uh, occur further upstream along that inner riparian zone. So it will be completely past the driveway. So that planting will not be impacted, it'll be far from the work zone. Um, we proposed it in an area where the sub canopy is just naturally very sparse, um, mainly because of uh, predominance of hemlock um, and then just pretty much some American beech coming in. So we're just sort of uh, proposing to take advantage of where we have natural clearings and install um, the berries there. So they'll have that sort of partial sunshade <laughs> uh, ecosystem. Um, the inner riverfront between the existing rows and the brook is now completely vegetated with a forested ecosystem. And the goal is to really avoid disturbing that as much as possible. There's some disturbance associated with just installing the erosion controls. There's some, there's some disturbance mainly associated with pruning to adhere to the request of the fire chief. Um, and then when we were taking a look at stormwater on the site, and again, I am not an engineer, um, so you, <laughs> you'll get him if you if you attend the planning board. <laughs> um, <I never> will. <laughs> one of the things that I noticed, though, when I was out there doing my ecosystem evaluation, was the road itself. There there were no significant washouts sure. towards the brook based on the current layout of the road. Right. So that's a good sign, and that's a characteristic that that project engineer picked up on as well. And the goal is to just top dress and widen the road enough to meet the requirements for planting and fire, but continue to mimic the drainage that's currently occurring. Because we can see that road has been there for decades and decades. We can see that it's working. We don't need to mess that up. <laughs> so <Right>. again, <laughs> the majority of the driveway is going to be graded so that the flow is sheet flowing off the driveway. It's either veering away from the road or away from the brook or it's coming down the road and then I'm I keep going like this with my hands I must have some Italian in me as I'm talking um but it, it will sort of have that uh dispersed flow at that lower elevation um you know I've seen instances on projects where commissions have requested no salt on on sections Mm -hmm. Typically, that's for more of a commercial site because they really, really use the salt. Mm -hmm. Just having walked that road a number of times, I would be hesitant to put a complete ban on the use of, of salt. I mean, someone's going to be trying to come home and get to work on that road. Yeah. Um, but I don't anticipate that New Luke and, and Natalie would be using a, a tremendous amount as compared to a com commercial, a commercial spot. Mm -hmm. Right, but okay. But the vegetation, will there be vegetation then between you know, the, the roadway and the brook that would still be protective of from, from the impacts of road and, and so on? Yes, yeah. So to reiterate, that area is vegetated now. Yeah. And okay. right now, the drainage is not heading in that direction. Right. And the no, goal I got is that. to okay. continue to mimic it so it doesn't go that direction. And instead, it's gonna it is gonna go down the driveway for a time, right. or we're gonna try to sheet it off um, uh, to the far to the far side to the north. Okay. Um, and this is going to have adequate. Uh, the road will have adequate stability for handling the various machinery that's going to go in to build a house. I mean, I'm I'm imagining well drilling equipment and other excavators and you know, big, big stuff like that. The, the road is substantial enough. Yeah, to, the existing uh, road itself is substantial yeah. and they'll probably, typically, they'll utilize that during construction and then do the final grading after all those large vehicles that you just mentioned right, are yeah. done. Um, the last time I was up there, I believe there was just a piece of machinery that had gone up to um, to pick up some uh, old culverts that had been dumped on the property. I can't remember if it was an excavator or a bulldozer or something, but uh, you know they've certainly had uh, equipment on that road. And and uh, my understanding is that in uh, there's a historic uh, use of uh, logging equipment as well. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Good. 
Um, thank you. Those are my questions. I appreciate hearing from you. I also just wanted to thank uh, the applicants for informing those of us who aren't really abutters, but letting us folk um, uh, in the neighborhood know of your interests and intentions. And I appreciate that diligence. So thank you for that. Mr. Chair, this is Pete. Could I jump in because I just had a thought before we do the rest of the public? Yeah. Okay, this is Pete Law. Uh, Emily, this might be more for the engineer, but having looked at that road, and you're right, you could see the, the troughs coming down where the, where the water would come right down the road. But as you do the road, the TRG and the road uh, resurfacing, I'm assuming there's going to be a crowning of some sort. Does that change? Mm -hmm. And this might be more for the engineering and maybe out of us, but does that change the dynamics of the flow enough to then overskirt that natural berm that's by the, the brook and allow more water there versus coming right down the road? Uh, any any uh, just any thoughts on that? Yeah, Pete, we, you know, I could really tell that, you know, we were talking about that a lot on the site visit, you know, we're all standing out there looking at that area, looking where some ice had developed. So um, I wanted to circle back uh, with Jeff Squire after our site visit. Um, and, and I did, and, and we had a team call and again, he, he, he reiterated that there will be some, some grading, but the real intent is, um, is not to crown it such that we're shooting it towards the brook, but it, it's actually the driveway itself will take some flow. And then the crown is really going to, um, take shape, you know, at that lower elevation, um, and then let it dissipate into that parking turnaround area. Uh, there may be some pitching of the road surface. I don't know if I'm, that's the correct term, but some pitching, but it would be away from the brook. So maybe on that northerly side um, to, yeah. to, to not, not, not a defined channel, but if, if anything, if there had to be some grading north or south, it would go north away from the brook. Yeah, I think it's kind of critical in that one pinch area. I think it's your photo seven in your application that's, that's, that's real close there and it, it's tight and that's probably not in our jurisdiction. I'm in the in the, the planning and engineering side of it, but just curious if you had any um, thoughts on that. So I appreciate the input and, and thanks for checking in with that with the team. Appreciate it. Yeah, Jeff would have loved to have been with us this evening. I think he actually has three other hearings. So there was just no way he was gonna make number four. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's been a great asset and, and I definitely wanted to circle back with him after our site visit. Thank you. Chairman, I'm, I'm let it go back to the, the public questions. That's okay, is there any other, any, anybody else have any questions on this or? Uh, John Pereski from Pocomtech Drive. Yes, John. Can you hear me? My apologies yes. if this has been brought up before, but I'm concerned what would happen if the applicant decides to pave the road? Is there, uh, I think the discussion of where the water runs off would totally change. Um, is there anything that would prohibit that from happening from the applicant paving? Um, I can speak to that in general terms. So the, the application before the commission is specifically um, for a gravel driveway. Um, and so if there were to be a change um, by this owner or any owner afterwards, that would be um, subject to review as a change. Um, and I believe it would be subject to review not only be before the commission, but also um, the planning board. But at this time, the applicants are very interested in doing their utmost to m maintain the aesthetic that's currently there on the property. And, and that is a, a beautiful gravel road through a wooded landscape. Um, and so really, um, it's my under understanding that the intent is just to preserve that to the extent feasible. Thank you. Okay, and anybody else? Questions? If, if not, uh, Bill, if you want to redo your uh, motion. I was also taking minutes through all of that. So, um, yeah, so, no um, yeah. so uh, Bill Mayor, PC, I'd like to make a, a motion to accept the notice of intent with the condition, um, and I'll try to read it. Uh, that there'll be uh, additional erosion controls at the first break and slope close to the start of the drive. Um, that's how I 
see it. I'm hoping um, that the commission is understanding where I'm coming from with that. Um, could I, Tim Hilchie, could I just jump in and say um, that we want erosion controls around um, the lower portion where um, an area is to be loamed and seeded. Do you have a descriptor of that, Emily? Oh, can't hear you, Emily. I, I just tried to share my screen um, so that you could see that. So on the site plan of record, it's called area to be loaned and seeded. So the commission could certainly um, cite that in the condition for clarity. Was that your question, Tim? Yeah, I was trying to help Bill with his motion. Uh, did, does that just include the area to be loaned or would that extend down into that lower area because of where that curved, that area to be loam and seeded is a fairly small percentage of that whole turnaround area. It appears to me having looked at it, but I may be off. Uh, additional erosion controls to be placed along the existing wood line in the vicinity of the area to be loaned. That would give you all of this. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Yeah, because right where that, I think it's WSB7 or something, that, that point there, that triangle, that was, it still came off there pretty quickly and, uh, and then it, it dropped down into the uh, wetlands area. So I, I think if we could put it all the way around there, if you can reword that, Bill, um, within the uh, woodlot line, that well, covered the greater thank area. You, Peter. Um, Yes, uh, since there was not a second uh, to my initial, then I can, uh, I think I can speak another. Um, uh, so a motion to accept the NOI with the uh, additional order of condition for additional erosion controls along the, um, do I need to say area to be loamed and seeded and along the wood line um, that bridge go? up to, I mean, do I say WFB5? Does that take us um, far enough? Because that would take us around that break and down. So to extend to WFB5. Yeah, maybe it's almost from that 100 foot buffer zone line down. Does that give you a demarcation that you would need, Emily? If that is that specific yeah, just enough? To, just to clarify, the notice of intent is already stating that we're going to have erosion controls all along this red line. Mm -hmm. So it was my, so th this is all, all going to have silt fence and, and straw bales. And so if we tie in with another line here and wrap it around, that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just extends it past that okay. that turnaround area. Yeah. WFB7, I think, is where the tree line and, and that lower area stop. All right, should I give it a third attempt? <laughs> so I'm ready. Again, there was not a second. I can withdraw my other motion and um, uh, make a motion to accept uh, the notice of intent with an order of condition of additional erosion controls up to WFB7. Louis Mission, I second it. Oh, thank oh. goodness. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Louis Mission, aye. And Burn, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Tim Hilchie, aye. Sorry, I was just studying the uh, the map again. Uh, uh, Pete Law, aye. Okay, I think we're uh, all set there, Emily. And uh, you know, it'll be uh, we'll we'll try to get this signed next week. 
because it's a little tough. We don't have any of that paperwork right with us. So, <laughs> so uh, I know many commissions have been that uh, have been struggling with the tracking down of the signatures in this remote day and age. Um, so we'll, we'll work on it next week and hopefully you'll have it by the end of the week there. Or it'll be ready. Thank you very much, Louie. Thank you all commissioners for your time both this evening and on the site visit. Um, and, and thanks to everyone from the public who, who joined in. This is, uh, this is local government and open meeting law at its best. So thanks for the great questions. And I, I hope I, I was uh, sufficient in answering them all. Yeah, well, thank you and good night. Thank, thank you, Emily. You. Thanks, thank Emily. You. Thank you, guys. Good night. Okay, let's see. We have another notice of intent. And this is for upgrades to the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility on 150 Sunderland Road. And whoever is going to uh, yep. explain a little bit here for us, uh, if yep. you could just state who you are and. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for having me. Um, my name is Justin Skelly. I'm with DPC Engineering. Um, we're currently working with the town on a multi-million dollar upgrade to its wastewater tr uh, treatment facility, specifically the South Deerfield uh, treatment facility located at 150 Sunderland Road. Um, I'm gonna try to do the same slick thing Emily did here and share my screen and kind of give everybody a quick overview. Um, okay. Project entails here. So I'm hoping everybody could see what I have up as an ortho photo here showing the extents of the site. Um, and my attention is on you. I just need to look uh, kind of away at this screen to be able to, to walk through it. So this is the existing site and red is the property line. Um, this is just a 200 foot offset that we used for notification uh, to abutters, um, which is what we typically do. I think it might have only been 100 feet in this case. Um, so the existing facility, um, we received generous grant funding from USDA Rural Development to go ahead with a wastewater treatment plan upgrade. Um, let's see, the next. So we did submit a notice of intent. Uh, Louis, I hope that got to you all right. Um, so we submitted yes. that uh, beginning of January. Um, so really the project entails uh, the following work. So. When we had the wetlands delineated, the only flagging um, that was noted was the uh, median annual high water line here, um, which coincided also with the bank. So 200 feet from that, um, this pink line cutting through the site here, um, that's our 200 foot riverfront area. And really the only work that we're doing within that wetland resource area um, is some minor piping on the site that'll be underground and, um, you know, the grade restored to its existing condition as it is now. And then there is this uh, process operations building um, that's getting installed that does have a portion of it, um, you know, shown here in the riverfront area. So that's really the only wetlands resource area um, on the site. And this is really the, the extent of the work um, that we have in that area. Um, we did coordinate with Mark Stinson throughout the process. Um, I wish I did that a little more up front because it sounded like from his opinion, we probably should have started with an RDA uh, to bring to your attention and kind of discuss it that way. Um, we are trying to get this project out uh, for public bidding in the next you know, few weeks to a month. So we just thought since we had already prepared the NOI, we would go ahead and, and continue down that path. Um, so this here is the letter from Mark Stinson. Um, he did issue a file number for us. Um, and then he kind of gave his opinions here, um, which I'm sure some of you might've already seen. Um, typically, you know, this type of work in the riverfront would be exempt for wastewater treatment plants specifically. Um, Mark obviously couldn't make that determination for you. Um, so I just figured I would come before you tonight and just kind of get on the same page and, and see if you had any additional questions or thoughts um, kind of on the project and where we stand with this. 
Okay. Yeah, I, it's pretty straightforward. I mm -hmm. I know, and uh, something that has to be done. And I did talk with Mark today about this, and there isn't the exemption there that number one mm -hmm. that uh, you know exempts this work, the type of work that's happening because it is staying within the uh, boundaries there of the existing and. Uh, what he, what he did uh, mention was that we cannot issue an order of conditions on this. Okay. Okay. Yep. What, what we can do if the board agrees and after their questions or comments uh, is that we can issue a uh, determination using the uh, the form, uh, let's see, a negative determination, number five on form two, which is part of a RDA request. And you would have that exemption in it. And that's the only thing we can do. We can't, because there isn't any exemptions related to an order of conditions. We are allowed to, uh, you know, sign off on a request for deter well on, under this form here it's basically what yep. you use with the uh request for determination yeah and in, in talking to mark that's why it kind of seemed like there was no loss if we just proceeded with the noi because we could always come back to this stage uh regardless um i guess i should have just added in you know we do have a, a robust um as we do on all projects a robust um you know, sedimentation and erosion control plan. Um, we're gonna pretty much or along the fence line install, um, you know, silt fence and hay bales. Um, so, you know, on most projects, we, we typically are, are aware and cognizant of, of maintaining the site in good order and, and being aware of, you know, all of those, those things. So um, I figured I would mention that, but then yes, I do uh, recall, I have it up here that Mark did make that comment that we could still fall yeah. back to, to this yeah, negative determination. Yep. All right now. Uh, any questions here from the board? Uh, Tim? Uh, Tim Milchie, yeah, this is just a quick um, question that may not actually relate to this, but um, I know that the town was doing work on the clar on a clarifier. Um, was, was that one of the, the, the clarifier that's in the uh, zone of uh, the 200 foot zone, or is that the, the other clarifier that's pictured there, or is it a different clarifier? Yeah, no, you're, you're right on. We just finished that project up a few months ago. So the clarifier that is already in the riverfront area was the one that had the internals of the tank replaced uh, this past year. So we are constructing a brand new, um, you know, 60 foot diameter concrete tank here, you know, all brand new insides. Um, so we will be mirroring this existing tank on the other side um, of the aeration tanks here. But it's outside the, the uh, 200 yep. foot setback, so. Yeah, that's this uh, this pink line kind of cutting right. through here. Um, okay. So that's outside of the, the zone there. Yep. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Chair, Pete Law. I, um, yeah, Pete. Just a, an order of how we do this. Can we make the, de the determination, the, uh, the negative part five form two on this NOI request, or do we need to see an RDA request to then make that negative determination on? No, we can, uh, the way Mark was talking, we, we can just use the WPA form two determination okay. that flip could be so okay. just a question on the yeah the i did I did, ask, yeah I did ask him about that if we could uh you know do we have to have an rda and he says no we can use this form which because no of the question. exemption okay and just that most of the work because they the exemption there really isn't a riverfront area now that's what he he suggests he told me when it's this type of work so when you're talking about some some uh, digging like inside the 200 foot well it's not really there 
it, this is all exempt. So, yeah. so he felt comfortable, you know, and I, he, he had that letter there stating that's pretty much, he couldn't decide, he couldn't approve, but just suggest we're the ones that do the approval. So. Yeah. Just one, one of the, the, the point of clarification on the process. So if we yeah. can do it with this, that's great. Double yeah, no, no, I was happy too, because that way we could keep it going. Yeah. So, uh, any uh, any uh, questions here? Any other questions out there? Anybody out there? So, if you would like, I will entertain a motion to. Um, issue a negative five determination of applicability using form two and check off a negative five and cite the exemption. And that would, uh, that would be the, the exemption would be uh, 310 CMR 10.58, six in parentheses, H in percent in parentheses. Yes. And, and uh, I, I, this is Louis Mission. I'll second that. All in favor, Louis Mission, aye. Ben Burn, aye. Bill Mayor, PCI. Need law, aye. Okay, I guess that's that's what we'll be doing, Justin. You, okay. You're all set. You'll have the determination there with the exemption. Great, thank you for your time. And like I say, it, it, we'll have to sign off on it next week there when we get it all put together. That's great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's see, we have, uh, let's see, a review of the certificate of compliance for Yankee Candle parking lot on Five North Street. Did uh, anybody, uh, everybody, take a ride by and and see the work that was done? Yes, I did. Yes. Is P law? Yes. Yep. Still mayor PCI. Yes, I did. And uh, Tim, I know you didn't see it the, or see the original, but you did make it to that then. And yes, uh, Pete Law and I went over after. Okay. And uh, I think it was a big improvement. Well, of course, the other guys were, were there. And uh, so I, I just, you know, I, I, uh, there's any other comments about it or any questions on it or no questions? No. Okay, uh, well, I'd make a motion that we uh, sign off on the, uh, the certificate of compliance for the uh, parking lot there on North 5 North Street. I'll second that, Louis. Bill Mayor, PC. Okay, all those in favor? Louis Mission, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Ben Byrne, aye. Bilal, aye. Okay. Thank you. We'll have something else to sign too. We'll have a we'll have to have a few folders out there. Uh, and next up would be uh, discussion about Woolman Hill work. Uh, I guess putting in a water uh, water uh, supply or is anybody yes. there for for Woolman Hill? Yes. Hi, I'm David Offeld. I live in Amherst. Um, I'm here representing Woman Hill. I'm the president of the board of directors up there. <clears throat> you may know of us. We're a Quaker retreat center up on Keats Road, up on uh, the end of Keats Road, up on the uh, Pocumptic Ridge. Um, we're in the middle. Uh, so I think this, what, what we're coming with is a question of jurisdiction. Uh, whether whether what we uh, a situation we have is under your jurisdiction or not. So if I may offer a little background, 
we're in the midst of a major capital, uh, some capital improvements during the pandemic. It's been, been opportune to do that. We're doing a bunch of septic work, putting an addition on a building and putting in a new well. And <clears throat> we're a public water supply. Um, so in order to install that well, we have to go through an application process with the state um, and we, we have done that and <clears throat> we've been uh, approved to go ahead with the well. Um, as part of that application, um, uh, as part of the well construction, I should say, we have to cross a meadow and then up into the woods a short distance and there's this, a wet spot in the meadow. As we were preparing all the paperwork for all this over the last several months, um, our engineer who's Berkshire Engineering out of Lee uh, in, in their application looked at the wetlands issue and uh, indicated that the site does, that this site area does not fall under the jurisdiction of the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, the DEP person was out there a couple of weeks ago. This did not come up. Um, as we brought the excavator and the well driller out to inspect the site. They saw that wet spot. The well driller was concerned about getting his vehicle through it. And um, we, uh, they, they asked, uh, and, and the excavator said, you know, he would build a road for him, which involves a little gravel across the meadow. And the question came up, well, is, this, is, there, is there a wetlands issue here? We didn't think so. So we thought, well, the best way to be sure is to contact the uh, contact you folks. And um, so a phone call was made by another member of our team and um, uh, it was suggested we come to this meeting. So that's, that's how I wound up here. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all about this. Um, so that's basically the question. Is this, in fact, a, a wetlands issue, this particular spot, uh, this road crossing, this, this road through the meadow? Um, I sent um, a few images to um, Sue. Uh, Rula. That person, I think, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at those or if if that would be useful. Yeah, I, I did. I did look at them. And I, 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 you know, a couple concerns that I have that, you know, we haven't been out there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty hard just to judge by a picture. Sure. But I am I'm curious why there's siltation fence up in that picture in near the meadow? That's that's one of the questions. Well, uh, the excavator put that up. I think he was concerned. Uh, uh, I'm actually not quite sure why he put that up. I, I, I suppose, you know, I think it was suggested to him that um, If for any erosion concerns during excavation, there'll be some earth moving, earth moving, of course, uh, that uh, siltation fencing might be requested. And so he proactively put it up. I believe that's what was happening there. And the, the other question I have, like I say, we haven't been out there and really hard to judge, but I'm just curious why you're talking about putting gravel and I understand that part, but why put a pipe in and gravel? To me, that sounds like water is flowing through there. Right. In that area occasionally, so. It, it, yeah, I just talked to him today. It, the pipe is his idea. This is the excavator. This, the excavator is um, uh, Tom Wozniak of uh, River Drive Excavating in Hadley. And um, his notion was that if there's sheet flow, if the, if the, if the gravel causes a, a bit of an elevated roadway, and if there's sheet flow, you don't want the roadway to act as a dam. I don't think it's necessary. 
the pipe because the actual uh, drainage area that would pass through that portion is very small. I don't know if you can tell from uh, the topographic map, but we're very near to a saddle. This location is very near to a saddle. I mean, like 50 feet away from a saddle in the topography. In other words, uh, water flows northward in one, one side of this location and southward in the other side. So it's, it's close to an ideal spot to, to not have much overland flow. Does anybody uh, have any questions out there for the board? Tim? Uh, Tim Hilchey, uh, David. So in this photo, when you say the saddle, um, the silt fencing runs along the tree line and then there's a, a piece of silt fence that sort of sticks out perpendicular from that. And yes. when you say the saddle, do you mean that if that perpendicular point there so it slopes off to the right and left in this photograph. Is that what you're talking about is the that's saddle? A, that's exactly right. Yes, that's right. And if you, if you travel uh, about 800 feet to the left, there's a, actually a wetlands area delineated on, on the MassGIS website. And if you travel, oh, 500 feet or so to the right, there's a headwaters of a stream. But right at this spot, you're basically on the top of that feature. And my, my other question is, um, since this work's been in process, you know, planning for a while, um, did the drought have any effect on why you didn't come to us sooner because you didn't notice that it was wet or nobody had come out to look at it? Is there well, a history? Yeah, as I said, the we, the the state the, the the in the in the application for the uh, public water supply well, you have to make a statement about whether wetlands are an issue, you know, in the vicinity of the well, and um, our engineer had made a determination that they weren't, and um, the state, as I said, the state visited, and no mention was made of it. This meadow that you in the photo is mowed regularly on a, on an annual basis. I've mowed it myself. Um, it's not, I've never noticed a wet problem generally in the summer, certainly. Um, it seems to be a high water table right now. Um, so we were, I, 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 I realize it's a bit odd to be coming at this point in the project, but we were under the impression that there wasn't an issue until the excavator sort of insisted that we be sure by asking you folks. And I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, unclear on the process. So I apologize for that. In other words, knowing who to ask first and who, who's, who's got jurisdiction over these various pieces. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it's Pete. I just have yeah, a couple Pete. of questions if I could. <clears throat> understand the, the process, uh, the, uh, the scheduling the flow issues there, uh, um, David. Uh, but if there is, uh, they, they probably was not concerned as they looked at the well area of wetlands, but the, it's more the access to it from my understanding. And I did look at your notes and, and the pictures quickly, and there wasn't a lot to gain from that. But as you're saying, that there's water flow, there, there's enough of a water flow to, that the construction guy's interested in putting a piping in. Um, with this, I, Louis, you can, you know, we can determine whether it's our, you know, jurisdiction to look at it, but I, I think we probably need to, if we have, um, you know, some oversight here that we probably need to look at it and get a better sense from just that one one picture. I, I, I can't I can't really picture it from that one picture of what's going on there. And obviously two or three entities have brought up concerns about water flow and the construction of the road through that area. Um, so that would be my concerns uh, this evening and I'll leave it up to the rest of the board to comment on that. Um, just to clarify one of the things that Pete said, Tim Hilchey here, 
David, if I understood you correctly, you said that the DEP came out and looked at this. Now, was there any other state agency that came out? Uh, no. Okay, and the DEP expressed that there were wetlands 800 feet in one direction and 500 feet in another direction, but in the field, they didn't note anything. I'm just, um, is that correct? That's correct, and yeah. Then, the wet spot was uh, something that the contractor who was going to go up into the area where you want to drill the well and put in, he was concerned that his machinery couldn't get through there. Um, and that, that's right. And this wet spot became an issue. So I was um, actually, Stephen Ball contacted me for whatever reason. And I said, well, you really should be talking to Louis Mission. I don't think this is something that, that I as an individual member could tell you it's okay to do what you're planning. Um, and so he, he did reach out to the commission, um, and I expressed the opinion, maybe it's a, maybe it's a wet spot that's, you know, just a natural feature, but it sounds like it's an isolated wet spot as opposed to something that joins up with something. But I agree with Peter that we probably would need to go out and look at it and just determine that it's not something that is under our purview, um. And is there a timeline consideration? Is that why, you know, you're here, um, you know, trying to get this thing done that I'm, I'm just trying to understand the urgency of, of this issue too. Well, we are trying to move this project along. Um, um, we have many pieces to the, to the larger capital camp, capital um, improvement project. Um, yeah, we, I, Steve Ball called you, I think it was last Friday. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and our hope was that somebody would come out and take a look at it, and we'd be delighted to have somebody come out and take a look at it uh, now or you know soon. Um, the and and yes, the 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 driller has an interest in getting. Uh, I think generally speaking, he likes frozen ground to to move yeah. on. Um. And he's got some space in his schedule in the next weeks and month or two. So, um, you know, that's the kind of urgency we're working with. Not an enormous Und amount of urgency, but we'd like to, like to keep it moving. That's Yeah, understood. But it's the most difficult time when there's half a foot of new snow and, and sure. frozen ground to understand sure. what, what's actually happening. I uh, pulled up a Ben Burner, uh, a Google aerial map you can actually there's a, a road view i can sh screen share if that helps at all that'd be great ben great. if you can uh, oh, wow. see that i believe this is the uh the that's exactly it right yes and uh that looks like where you guys are trying to go right out in here that's right is, so where is it going, Ben? Where that that cut is in the uh, the vegetation to the left there, where that kind of opening is, or is straight? Yeah, out? I believe it's kind of a little bit off the diagonal to the left, a little bit right off the corner of the yeah. parking lot. Right, right where your arrow is going is just about just about perfect. Yep, a, a little bit to the right of that of your of your arrow. So it looks like that's, you know, that's right about it where we we're heading up into the woods. So it's a, a short area of, of definite wetland vegetation type. Uh, stuff in there it looks wet but uh, yeah and Ben that helps a lot yeah no that thank you welcome so yeah so I uh, yeah that helped a lot and I'm trying to recall, I know quite a few years ago, we were out there with a question, uh, you know, what conservation was, and I'm not sure what it was for, but we did kind of have uh, a little concern of that area, what I recall. And, uh, you know, we definitely uh, can't, uh, I, I can't, let you know one way or the other on this. I would want, and I would expect the board would probably want a uh, to do a site visit 
And uh, I know it's kind of tough to do it now or even at least to get an idea that you might have to file an RDA or depending on what it looks like, if, if it looks like there's a flow from, looks like it's going from uh, top of the hill down that way. And I know it, I'm pretty sure it does what I recall that uh, if you had, uh, the, what'd you say, who was the environmental engineer you had working, David? That uh, Berkshire Engineering. And Mike, uh, Mike Kulig. And he, he checked the field, did you say? Yes. So my, my only uh, idea, uh, it's up to the board here, is that I would, I would, uh, I myself would want to do a site visit and see the area and then have him either present or for the next meeting, you know, to talk about what he thinks of this, uh, this area. That's, that's, that's where I would go myself, but I, yeah. I leave it up to the board on, on that. Yeah, we need to know kind of what he assessed the area for. Was it an assessment for the wetlands delineation or was he assessing something else? So I think those are valid questions, Louis. And Louis, could I ask um, Ben to share that, if he still has it, that, that view again? Because I want to ask a question that I asked of Stephen Ball um, and maybe get David's response. So I asked, I asked David whether, I mean, Stephen, whether there was any existing alternate way to get to this rather than just running straight to it. And so is there any possibility that this mode area is an access point? I mean, the, the one that goes off to the left, you're going too far now. Um, right there where the, where the, right uh, there, yes. That, uh, well, that, that goes off in a, in a different direction, essentially. If, well, if right, you, I'm just saying to, to avoid going directly through what you've d identified as a wet area. Um, yeah. Just trying to see if there's another way to drive the tractor over to where you need it to be. Um, oh, if you could go back to that view. <laughs> or this is... Well, that's a good shot too. It shows yeah. that it's a wetter, it looks wetter on the edge of the woods there. Yeah, looks like there might be a swale coming through there or something. Yeah. And even where that, that open area where they cut, um, Tim, it, it yeah. same, same type of vegetation came across. It was just cleared out and probably a dry time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Early, right. early fall here, mid fall. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, um, if you see close in uh, to the parking lot, there's a little tree right at the edge of the mowed lawn. Yeah, just and to the right, right bit, like a little maple there or something. Yes, right. Yes, exactly. And right behind that, at the at the tree line, ben, there's a Ben, move large... it to so we can see to the left of the... Uh... Yeah, Are you talking about the tree on the left or the little tree uh, on the right? The, I'm talking about behind the, the little maple at the edge of the parking lot. <clears throat> there's a large tree with a nice nice shape of, uh, of, of orange leaves on it. Right. Yeah. And that's about the highest point, the saddle I was referring to earlier. Um, and that's to where we're hoping to access. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, you've got your cursor right about at that spot. So the road um, would go from that little tiny tree towards the big, um, nicely shaped tree you're talking about. Yes. And that's where the saddle is that you're identifying. Correct. So it looks like a saddle, if I have my dimension right, maybe a saddle east and west, but you also get the flow coming down and at that wood line there there may be 
um, additional view there that Louis was talking about earlier. There might be a kind of a, a swale area as it drops down into that wetland. Yeah, I, I would really have to go see it and, and yeah, but it's hard to tell. You know, there's no there's no um, indication of any streams or uh, on the on the steep slope which comes off the Pecumtuck Ridge. Um, but basically, you have the you have the slope off the Pecumtuck Ridge, and then you have uh, the slope away from that parking lot, and yeah. where they meet. And I'm I'm very much exaggerating with my hands here, but where they meet is a is a low spot. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's more uh, north it's along the tree line, which runs yeah. along the tree line. And that's, and what I'm saying is that the saddle is such that um, at the spot we're talking about that, that, that low spot along the tree line, you know, kind of splits in one direction, it goes north and the other direction, it goes south. Okay. Tree line that's is north south. That helps. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. So, and there's no sign of flowing water in the, in the meadow either. It's just kind of soggy soil occasionally. And and right now. Yeah. I mean, now, it's, now it's kind of frozen, but there's there's no no sign of streams or oh just a quick look at that vegetation was would show that it's probably be a little moist in there at times. Yeah. <laughs> so uh... I don't know what what the what's the board so, thinking about this. Yeah, what would so, be the next step for David to take here? Uh, Louis Bill Mayer, PC. I mean, I, I really do think you know for David for for his organization that that we we do need to uh, have a site visit. Um, uh, I appreciate Ben uh, pulling up the Google Earth photos and um, uh, I think it brings up. Uh, enough questions that it would be better for us to be on site. No, I, I think so too. And David, I like I said, I think you uh, talked to Berkshire uh, Design Group there and yep. talk to them about our concerns and uh, that, you know, we'd like to do a site visit and what their recommendation for you would be, you know, do they feel that there's no issues and they'd, uh, you know, submit some information or talk to the board on the next meeting after the site visit or that, that, that's where I think it, you would have to take a next step, but, uh, you know, talk to them more on that one that there is concerns about that wet area and how it's addressed to be crossed. So. Yeah, David, if I could add to, I mean, it sounds to me like the problem is that the contractor wants to build a road. And is there a temporary pontoon system that goes across that? Ask your engineer, is there another solution besides putting a gravel road in there? Or mm -hmm. is the gravel road necessary because it's necessary to maintain the well at some point? I mean, it, it wasn't clear to me when uh, Stephen Ball called whether it was just to get up there and drill, or if it was right. to, you know, why is the road being built? Well, the other question, uh, Ben Byrne, is uh, are you trying to plan to do this with all the ground frozen? And is that gonna obviously create less of an impact to where you won't have to build a road? The hope was to do it when the ground's frozen. Um, the, uh, Unfortunately, I was not there when the when the well driller was there, so this is kind of secondhand. But my understanding is that uh, he's concerned that it's very heavy. You know, the well the well rig, which is very heavy, um, uh, might uh, break through the frost. Yeah, if the frost ain't if it's not deep sure. enough. Um, I mean, it's it's getting it's getting cold. But I think when these conversations were happening, it was it was a bit warmer. You know, the frost hadn't really hardened up. Um, yeah, I mean, you're just a few weeks away from it really changing, switching back from the, the real cold to starting to uh, yeah. thaw a bit. Yeah. So, well, as I said, we we you know our, our initial hope was, and this is of course short notice, but was to um, 
get somebody up there to take a look at it. Um, and um, do we need we'd be, a, to, we'd be happy to host you, obviously. Yeah, do we need to take a look at it? Do we should we advise to, to start the RDA process or wait till we review it with the engineer and then see what the next steps are just to save David and his group some time? It's Bill Mayor of PC. I actually had the same thought. Um, um, you know, because that would that would get the team something moving. Um, a little more formal. Yeah. Yeah, and I th I think it helps them out too because if anybody does question what went on and how come they're doing the work, if they you know someone does you know you, you you do have the RDA as a backup that you did sign off on it or you however you uh, you know determined that uh and, and david could uh he would have Berkshire design it sounds like you know prepare it for for them or advise them more so that that's that's what i think you know should be done but the rda yeah. would be the quickest and it's it's uh and it covers everybody too that's the whole thing you got to protect the applicant and and the board yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Louis. If we just go up there, just because we want to take a look at it and make a decision, we don't have any real record of doing it right. Yeah. And can I ask, what's an RDA? Uh, it's, go ahead, Tim. I'll let you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a request for determination of applicability of the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh -huh. so, okay. And what you're what you're looking for is hopefully that we'll have a negative finding. Or I see. Some, something like that, um, but but your engineer, your design team will know exactly what it is, and what they need to do to get the paperwork filled out, and um, as soon you know, as, as soon as they can get it in, we can. I mean, we we can have a site visit uh, scheduled quickly and try and help you move it forward. But um, that's the step. Okay, well that that's. That's great, um, and, and indeed, that's what what, I, what I'm here for is a determination on your part of the applicability of, of your you know is is this something you need to uh, weigh in on? So um, okay, so the process is we file an RDA with you folks, and then once you have that, we set up a uh, an appointment for a visit. And there is snow on the ground, obviously. It can, can a visit be fruitful for you even with snow on the ground? Uh, you know, it, it depends on how much snow is on the ground, I think. It, it gives you an idea of the slope area yeah. and what's all around it. See, we, all we're seeing is one little spot other than Ben showed the uh, you know picture there, but we don't get the, uh, Topo on what really is happening in that area. So uh, I'm not sure. I think you could probably uh, maybe still have a site visit depending on the weather. You never know the way it's been here. Yeah, but, once we get through this weekend, it's, <laughs> this polar weekend, we're supposed to warm up a little bit. So we'll see. But okay. But we could do the initial site visit. And if we still have questions, we can then push okay. it off and say yeah. we, need, we need to wait. But um, I think it would be helpful, but I, I, I think to, you know, if there's a recommendation uh, to you, David, is, is let's start with the RDA, the formal process, get a site visit in place and, and get the, the process moving um, forward and uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try to move on as quick as we can. And okay. the, uh, the form is available on the Deerfield website and I'm sure that your engineer knows yeah. where it is. and. Um, so you should be able to get it and start it, get it filled out quickly. Now, uh, I, I talked to my, the engineer about this today and he reminded me that he's not a wetland scientist. So would it, and, and we do know wetland scientists, our group, within our group, would it make, would it be more appropriate to have somebody with that kind of training? Uh, now, now fill, out who, the, fill out the RDA and help us with that process. 
Well, who, who, de who decided there wasn't any wetland then issues then? If it wasn't an environmental, I thought Berkshire Design has uh, environmental people. You, you know, I, I was here for the first, your first letter, um, notice of intent thing with the, and it was, I was struck by, you. The, it was Berkshire Design. This is Berkshire Engineering, different organization, oh, different okay. company. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I don't, I don't know what their process is actually. Okay. So if he says he doesn't, see any wetland issues then he's not he wasn't really qualified then what you're saying because you'd have to get somebody well, else he, yeah right he personally doesn't have that but he may have somebody on his staff in, uh, in any case, my, I, I think my question is it, is it okay with you if we have work with another person on this particular issue oh you you can work with whoever you would like okay yeah yeah no i just assumed that when right. you said, when he said, when you said, he said that there was, wasn't right. any wetland issues, I thought you had an environmental specialist there too. Well, I think he does, but um, we may want to, we, we, we know some other folks who. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, one of the, <laughs> I have to say one of the challenges, he's in Lee. So getting him out here is harder than, you know, somebody that's more local. Right. And I think the, one of the confusions is Stephen Ball mentioned that DEP people communicated to you about wetlands. So it's not clear who said what about what. And the, a local, a local um, wetlands scientist would be the person that could help you the quickest. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify, um, I, I went to the... Uh, DEP, uh, the Mass GIS, Oliver, to look for wetland areas. And there is a wetland delineated area uh, about 800 feet to the uh, south of this spot, but nothing you know, on this spot itself. So I was referring to that earlier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate your time and I, I, I think I've dropped a, a bit of a problem that I'm confused about, but it's now much clearer how to proceed. Okay, yeah, it's, you know, like I say, you want to protect yourself, the organization, and we want to protect ourselves here to the town. Sure, sure. We don't want you to get started with something and then have somebody shut you down. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I think we're, uh, you know, we tried to try to get it set up for the uh, next meeting and uh, maybe you know, do a site visit prior to that. It, those are usually done still because of the, because of the uh, daylight. We usually try to do them Saturday mornings just the, okay. week the week before uh, the scheduled meeting. And the RDA has to be in, you know, a few weeks before that. So DEP will have a review and, uh, you know, it can be posted. Yeah. The, isn't there a 14 day public hearing notice? Yes, in, in the paper. And that has to, you know, I forgot how that works exactly. I have to talk with Sue in the office. Okay, but, and, and you meet monthly, I believe. Yes, it's yeah. the, the uh, fourth, uh, fourth Thursday. Month, fourth, fourth Thursday. Of mm -hmm. the month, and that would be uh, February 25th. Mm -hmm. I believe, cool. right, gentlemen? That's hey, yeah, Bill Mayor, PC, that would be correct. And if that, okay. that works for the board, I think we'll, we'll end up setting it up that way after, you know, after this. And, uh, All right. So it sounds so, if, if, if we hope to make that meeting, the it's February 25th, we have to move quite rapidly on our end. Yes, you do, sir. To get the paperwork to you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. And well, again, thank you very much. And uh, I, 
I'm enjoying learning about this process. <laughs> all right. We're always learning too. <laughs> right. Oh. So we'll probably David. see you next month. Yeah. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So, and then, uh, Louis, before we move um, further, I, I do have a question. Um, at our December 17th, Bill Mayor PC, at December 17th meeting, we were uh, going to consider the Cumberland Farm Certificate of Compliance at this meeting. Um, All right. Well. And I don't see that that made the agenda, but that was in our minutes. Yes, it forgot to even have it put in there. And uh, what happened with that is I talked with Mark about that. That, and I did look up some of the uh, some of the info on uh, the notice of intent and what's required by Cumberland Farms for the maintenance of the uh, stormwater management system they have there, and they are required to clean it and by by annually and have a log book with all this info on it and as far as we know there isn't anything there i haven't sent the emails for 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 the confirmation of the log book yet i talked to mark today about that and i will uh set something up an email and send it to, we'll talk about it, to Tim and uh, to Sue to send it from the uh, town hall to the uh, environmental engineer and uh, to, uh, before we can even uh, sign off on the certificate. So that's, that's gonna be down the road quite a, quite a ways, I would say. Okay. So for the purpose of, of our of the minutes uh, tonight, um, so um, it's re review what log book now? What's well, a maintenance log book maintenance. On, the, on the cleaning, which requires okay. cleaning the stormwater management system, which means mowing the uh, retention pond and okay. dredging it out, cleaning it and uh, you know, because Mark has concerns about it. Okay. With the, you know, not draining fast enough. So he thinks there's, you know, it needs to be cleaned like it's proposed. Okay. Louis, so, were the stipulations of the cleaning in their permit? So the yes. It's, it, okay. Yeah, it's part of the stormwater management system and it's in the uh, notice of intent, their booklet. Okay. Thank you. And I, I did get a chance. I, they had to go find the files out in the trailer and I did look them over. I did, they did allow me into the town hall. <laughs> so I did look it over. So I will, even though I, I'll be pretty much all done here, I will still a couple little things to wrap up and I'll go over it with the next chair who, who you guys decide to uh, accept. But I think we got one more person here. I see a number, I'm not sure. So, and then just back to Cumberland Farm. So our goal will be to review this information and then possibly consider it as old business at our next meeting. Uh, I don't think you'll have anything uh, for the next meeting, but uh, you could, I guess you could just put it as old business to just to review uh, Okay. the, uh, Certificate of Compliance process for Cumberland Farms. Okay. And because of the uh, cease and desist order that we issued or be, uh, we issued, but uh, through DEP, they're the ones that really issued it and have to approve that culvert. And so they can't do that until the Certificate of Compliance is is accepted okay. from us. Okay. So Mark is holding that and he he's, uh, you know, so that's that's gonna be down the road a ways. Okay, all right, thank we're you. Just, 
Yeah, okay. And we have a phone number here. I'm not sure who. Oh, uh, this is Rob Louis. Yeah. That's oh, Rob. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We have a uh, just uh, something that came up there. Uh, Mass DLT wants to talk about uh, an upcoming uh, request for determination. And just wants to explain a little bit, which we received from uh, Mass DLT, but it kind of got mixed up in the uh, town hall. So they're going to have to submit another RDA, which will probably be, I assume, for the next meeting. So he'll just explain a little something of, about it. If you could, Rob, if you could tell us, state your name and your position there at Mass DLT. Well, yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Robert Notario, Mass DLT. I'm the district environmental engineer. Um, some of you may recognize me from previous uh, meetings and discussions. Uh, thanks for having me. It, it's going to be a very, very brief, just uh, kind of informational update for you. So we submitted an RDA. It got mixed up um, at the town hall and never made it to your commission or to your staff. Um, but someone in one of your offices was kind enough to approve it, sign it, and mail it back to us. So <laughs> we'll be resubmitting that. And um, when you hear RDA, most of the time you think, okay, there's going to be some work, and we're going to approve it or not approve it, a negative or positive determination, um, and things like that. This, this RDA process, um, and I'm just going to go over it real quick, and I'm just going to assume that not many of you are familiar with the entirety of the of this process. So um, state agencies or uh, utilities work with Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources when they want to use herbicide and develop a vegetation management plan. And that's what the RDA that we're going to be submitting is for. Um, under the Wetlands Protection Act, the work is actually exempt but there is a requirement um, with MDAR and the Wetlands Protection Act is that the towns in which the spraying will take place, the CONCOMs are asked to confirm um, mapping of the resource areas. So when we submit the RDA, we're going to be asking for a positive determination saying that, that yes, there are resource areas and um, you know, you provided the mapping. So basically our mapping is a couple different ways. We show USGS environment features maps, and we also make our own, what we call spray sketches and research area sketches. Basically just show northbound, southbound on 91. They show the areas that could possibly be sprayed and the areas that can't be sprayed depending on the legal setbacks um, that's set by Again, not the Wetlands Protection Act, but it's set, it's set by MDAR, Department of Agricultural Resources. And we have all those setbacks and notes and things on the sketches. So we'll be, we'll be submitting that. And uh, I'll be back up again, um, most likely online in front of you and available for questions. But I wanted to at least give an opportunity, too, to talk about it. Um, Make sure you're aware that's coming up and just uh, kind of more of an informal discussion if anybody had any um, information that they needed or had questions. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Rob, this is Louie. And I had a busy day talk with Mark. <laughs> we talked about this and he, he's exactly what you said, and I don't know if you guys want to make note of this, that, and whoever's the chair can, uh, you know, touch base with Mark again, is that he says what we would do, he suggests we do is, and what they normally do is we do uh, take the RDA and uh, we determine that it's a positive number 2A which means the determination is valid for the area shown on the plans. 
and only that. And he, he suggested that uh, there's a line underneath that you would put like the determination is valid only for herbicide work, no other type of work, because that's what the, uh, the limits are is through the Department of Agriculture. I believe that's what Rob was saying. So that's, that's, that's what you would put in nice and simple. And of course you go over to plans and I did see the plans and they, they, they do it for every town up and down 91 in the Mass Pike. And uh, it, it's pretty well marked out and they mark up the guardrails where they can spray and where you can't, they have, tags and everything. And he did say this is, uh, this is good for five years. That's what I think the state has. It's just in their uh, specs, I guess. So I, uh, is that correct, Rob? That's how I interpret, interpret it as well. Um, it, it's a, kind of a flip-flop of an RDA process, but it, it's a little different, but it seems to work out okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what Mark suggests. You know, he says that's what they do. And, uh, you know, you got to go by Mark. <laughs> he's got the experience. So I think anybody, well, got, any, anybody got questions for, for Rob here? It's Bill Mayer, PC. I don't have any questions. I Thank you for the introduction for the next meeting. Okay, I, I think we're all set, Rob. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'll include uh, my telephone number and email with the information. Anybody can feel free to, to touch base at any point. All right, thank you. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Ah, there's, we have no mail to review. And let's see. Well, I, I am leaving. I don't know if Ben knows that or not or heard. I'm choosing to ignore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I've enjoyed it. It was, it's been interesting and, uh, you know, definitely learning all the time. And, uh, you know, I know you guys will, will do good. I, I have confidence in you. I, I waited to, to the board got built up again because uh, 23 years, I think, is enough time. Wow. Uh, yes, so, congratulations and thank you so much. I'm surprised. I, I didn't think I was going to last this long, but. They, they, it just ends up the time goes by so i think uh probably we should do is uh to to get it in the minutes that uh we need to have pick a chair here and i i think uh you know just talking with a few people i think uh like to suggest uh tim hilchy as uh as the chair for whatever time to start here next meeting so i'd like to second that nomination thank you bill mayor yeah. pc all those in favor louis mission aye bill mayor pc aye ben burton aye beat law definite aye i'll abstain <laughs> <laughs> that means you're going to accept <laughs> no that thank you yes i i certainly have a <clears throat> As, as do all of us, a huge learning curve. But um, as you say, Mark Stenson is a good uh, good person to lean on. And I think we'll all be doing that in your absence, Louis. Uh, yeah, well, like I said, I was I was talking to him this afternoon and all this, you know, I, I kind of wait to, towards the end. And uh, but every meeting I talk to him about little something or pretty much so. And I will, uh, you know, get some of this. Of course, I think you have his number already. Do you? Tim, I do. Or yes, his cell I do. phone. You got the cell phone and everything. And we should confer to make sure I have all the numbers I need. 
Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something here and, uh, and you know, get to you because I got to send them something or have Sue send, uh, you know, the, your number and the email and everything, contact information, so, for us. So, Good. I think uh, next we have to set the date for the uh, next meeting, and I believe that's February 25th, 2021. Does that sound all right with everybody? They can probably make it. Shouldn't yes. be an issue. Yep. Yeah. Pete Law, fine. The Mirror PC is fine. So, fine. and like I said, if you want to give me a call, Tim, I can try to help you there. I don't mind, uh, you know, a few questions here for a little <laughs> while. <laughs> make them easy, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to. But uh, no, I appreciate all the help you guys, you know, gave and coming on board too. That's that was the big thing, trying to get people to do it. So I, I think you guys have a good feel for it. So I feel confident. Well, thank uh, you, Louis, for all your help and guidance in 23 years of doing this a long time. It's uh, yeah, I know. Don't say uh, that. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm in the same boat in a lot of things, but uh, I, I appreciate working with you over the last year and a half or whatever I've been on. And so thank you for all your efforts and yeah. your guidance. Appreciate it. Thank you. It just and, I can uh, do is try before your we, best. Before we go too far, we still have minutes to review from. Oh, yeah. Very meeting. good. Very good. Kind of Bill sure keeps us in line. Very good. Okay, we had uh, minutes for December seventeenth. Anybody uh, get to look at? Everybody get to look at those. Bill yeah. Mayor, PC. Other than writing them, I did get a chance to look at them. Well, you're, uh, did they come out <laughs> the way you wanted them, or? Uh, I did not have any concerns. Anybody else? I would make a motion that we accept the uh, the minutes for the December 17, 2020 meeting. Will we mission? I'll second it. I was uh, absent, so I'll abstain. Uh, all those in favor, aye. Louis Mission. Aye, Tim Hilchey. Aye, Bill aye. Mayor PC. Be law, aye. Okay, then. Uh, I guess what time is it? It's a long meeting here. I didn't 905. think it was going to be this long. 9.05. I guess we can uh, adjourn for tonight. And Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Louie. Thank you, Louie. Louis. Thank you for... Uh, and like I say, I still have a few little things to wrap up that, you know, I'll uh, send to Sue and uh, let Tim know more what's going on with a couple of those little things I got to do. <clears throat> there's a there's a report uh, annual report that uh, we're supposed to put for the town uh, meeting warrant and it's it's pretty basic and uh, that's for last year's work so I got to uh, you know talk to Sue about that and then I'll go over it with you Tim all right so thank you all this all you know all these little things I'll go over with you and We'll get you, we'll keep you going. <laughs> All right, good, good night, everybody. Good night, right. Louie. You take care. Night. Good, good night. night, be well. Good night.